Good for you. You aren't satisfied with just applying for jobs. You want to do it well and shorten your job search. In this video, you'll learn how to get the most out of JobMine, starting with your skills inventory. Then we'll move on to foundational jobs for first work term students, filters, and strategies to get your application package to the top of the pile, even if you don't have stellar grades or tons of experience. First, your skills summary. Why fill it out? Because we may use this section to find you and alert you to opportunities that might not be posted or even to apply on your behalf if you've given us permission to do so. So you can see that a few minutes of your time might really pay off. The skills inventory starts with a comments box. Here you can give us information about your exam schedule, the date you will leave campus after exams, and any periods of absence beyond your control when your contact information might be different from what's on your resume. Next are your geographic preferences. To enter your location preferences, select the location ID magnifying glass button, which opens a lookup table. Select the lookup button. Choose your location preferences from the list that appears. If you would actually work in a geographic area, add it, even if it's not your first preference. If you wouldn't work in that area, however, or know that your parents wouldn't allow it, do not add it. That said, we encourage you to discuss with your parents the benefits of being flexible when it comes to geography. Restricting yourself to Waterloo, a small hometown, or the greater Toronto area may mean missing out on opportunities or even missing out on co-op employment altogether. Co-op jobs are short-term commitments and the skills you develop in a far-flung geographic area may help you land the jobs you want, where you want, in the future. Now comes the meat of the section, your skills. There are over 500 to choose from, so yes, you will have skills you can add. Oddly, the skills that you find least impressive may put you in the running for last minute job opportunities. If you have a valid driver's license or access to a car, fluent in French for example, add those. They are commonly sought by employers. CPR certification is also frequently overlooked by students and requested by employers. If you've got it, flaunt it. Of course, you should also add your technical and transferable skills. For that matter, you might want to make sure the same technical and transferable skills show up in your resume summary of qualifications. To add skills, click on the plus sign and then select the skills ID magnifying glass button. Those frequently overlooked skills I mentioned are categorized as special skills. Look through them to see which apply to you. Now that you have your skills filled out, and you're remembering to update them as they develop, let's talk about foundational work terms. If you're looking for your first co-op job, you're probably wondering how, let's say, you're going to find a mechatronics job with only limited mechatronics coursework under your belt. Realistically, on your first work term, you're looking for a job that will provide you with transferable skills rather than jobs that require specialized coursework or experience. That's okay. Your first work term is often about gaining exposure to the right professional environment. In some less glamorous roles, you're still going to learn, for example, how to follow safety regulations, how to communicate professionally with colleagues and clients, and other skills that will help you land a more focused job for your next work term. This also means you can search outside of your specific program. For example, arts and business students can apply for management engineering jobs. Applied Health Science students and science students should review one another's co-op postings. Environment Resource Studies and some science students might find useful opportunities in one another's disciplines. There are some exceptions. Pharmacy students need to stick to pharmacy-specific jobs. Architecture students' primary focus is on architecture jobs. However, they can also apply to planning jobs. Engineering students, for the most part, need to apply for engineering jobs. That said, software engineering students can apply for math or physics roles and vice versa. Confused? Ask a career or student advisor for guidance. Not only can you search outside your program, but you can also search outside your level. In fact, each year, jobs targeted to intermediate students or higher are filled by junior students. I'm not advising that junior students apply only or even primarily to intermediate and senior jobs. That's a great way not to get interviews. I'm saying that if you can't find junior jobs that fit and you're a junior student, look at those intermediate jobs. If you have most of what they're asking for, apply anyway and make sure your cover letter lets the employer know why you'd be an asset to them. 
Then the employer can decide whether your skills are up to the task. Don't rule yourself out too early, especially in the continuous phase when many intermediate students already have jobs. Cover letters can also help an employer understand why they should interview you out of the many candidates they can choose from. You will probably hear from other students that cover letters are unnecessary and that they or a roommate or a friend landed a job with an amazing company without ever using cover letters. Don't let someone else's bad advice cost you a job. Please heed this advice, especially if you are a junior student. You may meet people who got jobs without cover letters, but those people may have more experience, better connections, or some specialized skill that you don't. Every semester, we hear from employers who are disappointed that too few students promote their abilities through cover letters. If an employer has 90 applicants, it's easy for them to reduce that to a manageable number of applications to read just by ruling out all applicants who haven't used a cover letter. Make sure that if you're taking the time to apply, your application gets read. By the way, make sure your cover letter doesn't work against you. If you're applying for a general business role, but your preference is to work in a legal environment, don't include a paragraph about how much you'd love to work in a legal setting. You're telling the employer that you don't want to work for them. Just delete that paragraph. Or better yet, have someone proof your cover letter. Whether that is a career advisor or a close friend, this is an important step that is often overlooked. You've probably noticed that some of the advice in this video has less to do with JobMine and more to do with your preparation for applying. If you'd like to know more about these topics, check out the Center for Career Action Appointments, Drop-Ins, Workshops, and Resources. Our website is uwaterloo.ca slash career dash action. Thanks for listening and good luck on your applications.